三二一。Hello and welcome to Xinhua Life. I'm Zhao Yuchao with China's Xinhua News Agency. Weifang in East China's Shandong province is known as the kite capital of the world. The city has a time-honored tradition of making kites. It's also one of the four most famous kite-making cities in China. And the city and the little town we are in today here is called Yangjiabu. It's one of the most important kite making base in Weifang City, and today we are going to show you the various schools of kite making at this place, and also the process of how to make a traditional Chinese kite. And later we will talk to a very well-known craftsman who is bent on protecting the cultural heritage and passing on the art and skills to the younger generation. And here we have a special guest. Hi, Nicholas. Hello. Can you say hi to our audience and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Nicholas. I'm from Ireland.、Um, I'm teaching over here at the High Tech International School in Weifang. Yes.、Uh, oh, wow, you come from Ireland. That's a long distance over from here. Why you come to Weifang? I came to Weifang to、uh, teach and to experience Chinese culture. And then, have you ever heard of kites here? Yes, I have. I've、um, my friend was here before me, and he、um, talked about kites and tradition of flying kites here. Okay, so let's go to find some stories about kites.、Yeah. <laughs> We are walking through the streets of Yangjiabu. You may get the impression that residents here are sort of crazy about kites. We can see that on both sides of the streets are all shops that sell and make kites. As a matter of fact, in Yangjiabu, kites were originally byproducts of local woodblock New Year's printings, a national intangible cultural heritage item that dates back some 600 years. At the beginning, substandard prints were made into kites for children, and later, the bright colors and exaggerated figures of the prints became popular features of local kites. When the kites were first invented in Chinese culture some 2,300 years ago, they were intended to be a sky-reaching symbol that signified a geometric code for perfect life. Referred to as paper eagles, these symbol structures were first made of bamboo and wood, and were displayed in a white T-shaped design. In the hundreds of years that followed, kites became increasingly popular. During the Han, Dan Han Dynasty, General Han Xin submitted the wood frame used by previous artists with thin pasted silk. After the art of paper making was invented by Cai Lun. Paper replaced by silk used in kites. A combination of these traditional techniques and modern methods may be seen in the kite making crafts today. And today we have a special guest, special guide for us. Uh, Wang 先生您好，能跟我们的观众介绍一下您自己吗？呃，可以啊。呃，我呢叫王宇炫，呃，是中国风鞋的副主席。也是咱们那个飞机传承人，呃，也是我们这个潍坊风筝产业协协会的会长。大家好。Okay, Mr. Wang Yongxun is a kite master and vice chairman of the Chinese Kite Flying Association. Most importantly, he the representative heirs of the China's intangible cultural heritage kite. So welcome to Xinhua Life. Let's take a tour here and enjoy different types of kite. 那我们就近期逛一逛吧。Oh, and here is the workshop and also a cut making score for cultural, intangible cultural heritage kite. 
And when entering into the showroom, the first thing that catches my eye is a giant dragon here. Um, hi, Nicholas. What attracts you most in this showroom? Uh, I like the large dragons and the many dragons here. They're very colorful and impressive. And the craftsmanship is very high. So I like them very much. And I like the large tiger as well. Very special. It's yeah. on the roof. <laughs> yeah, no. Maybe I'll... our audience can also take a look at the tigers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're very good. Very impressive. Mm. I heard that this dragon head is about 1.5 meters high, and that's even taller than Yao Ming. This is about 2.5 meters high. Yes, this is about 2.5 meters high. Our foreign friends are very interested in this dragon head. Can you tell us about the composition of the dragon head? And is it about the composition of the dragon head? Yes, we can. The dragon head is divided into five parts. We can see the dragon head as well. The dragon head is the most famous dragon head. The dragon head is the most famous dragon head. The dragon head is the most famous dragon head. 什么叫串儿的呢？它后面的龙片儿是一片片的，连在一起。你像这个龙呢，呃，就上百米、上千米都可以。呃，所以说它在这个制作的过程中吧，呃，工艺呢是非常复杂的。呃，龙呢也是中华民族的象征。呃，每次啊，我们做这像做这这大的风筝的时候啊，呃，包括我们每次、啊、出去表演的时候呢，我们呀、啊、都必须要放龙，因为龙呢在中国是非常吉祥的。And Chinese traditional kites are divided into five major categories. They are namely the soft wing type, hard wing type, and string type, barrel type, and plate type. Kites in Weifang have diverse themes and strong local flavors and atmosphere of folk life. And here the dragon head we see is called the cluster or string type kite. It is made by stringing several kites together with one or more strings. It's the most representative kite in Weifang. When it flies, there are also sections of the waist piece in the back. The dragon kite belongs to the string type category. Dragon head centipede kite is the representative of Weifang traditional kites. And different from the general string type kites, such kites have stero stereoscopic dragon head of very complex structure. And in ancient China, Chinese mythology and religious belief assign the dragon attributes to wisdom and strength, promising good luck and wishes. The dragon is also a single symbol for dignity. Oh, I 呃，那个一个是呢，你像咱们看到这这个呢，就是咱们这个刚才说是个龙啊，龙的身体，这个，它这个龙呢放起来之后啊，你要呃，咱们看到这个龙啊，这个龙呢是一百二十米，一百二十米放到天空啊非常壮观，你像刚才看到最大的龙呢，这个龙呢能达到上千米，哎，所以说这就一片片的连在一起，就串式风筝。哎，我我呢，呃，现在给大家介绍一下我们风筝的分类。嗯 ，the centipede are kite trains with a dragon head and a train of equally dimension kite discs. Head and disc are interconnected with one or mostly three lines. Centipede may have numerous. Attractive power. These kites give an attractive and vivid in-flight view, especially when the wind moves and, and deform the kite train. And, uh, will be one thousand feet long. Hmm. This is one hundred feet. Uh, we last year did one thousand three hundred feet. And the centipede part we have just seen is about 
100 meters long. And last year, Ms. Wang has produced a um, dragon head centipede kite for about 3,300 meters long.呃可以啊呃你刚才看的这这个沙燕这个沙燕呢就是咱们那个中国的最传统的风筝叫硬翅风筝呃为什么叫硬翅风筝呢因为它这个沙燕呢它两边呢有这个凹槽整个上下都有
and there is a dinosaur. And that lady is called the Moon Fairy in Chinese folk tale. Uh, moon Lady. Moon Lady, yeah.那我看这里还有一些像宫灯一样的风筝这个是这是风筝吗还是就是一盏灯呢and this kind of kite looks, which looks like a lantern, is a, called a barrel type kite. It looks like a lantern in this way, but it's definitely a kite. Uh,同事风筝呢，它整个呢，就说是呃，周边呢，嗯，都有骨架，中间呢是一个空筒，像这样的风筝，嗯，一旦风力合适啊，这个风筝飞得特别高。The, and others. Okay. This kite belongs to the barrel type kite. It looks like a lantern in this way, but when it flies in the sky, it's a kite. When making this kite, uh,那制作这些风筝的时候，竹子是不是就会特别是需要什么特别的工艺吗？呃，因为风筝啊，它要放到天上去，所以说呢，这个呃，我们制作的时候吧，这个主条啊。呃，要求非常轻，呃，面料呢，呃，比较薄，呃，说这样的风筝呢，呃，才更容易起飞。When making this kite, the bamboo strips are very thin, so it is very light. As for its principle of flying, the side it looks like a barrel at the top, and the bottom are both ventilated. After it is ventilated, a row of lines is hanging on it. Two lines are tied, and after this cut fly in, the, in this way, such an angle is formed, and it is particularly beautiful when flying. Uh, 嗯对这也是中国的道教文化你像这八卦风筝呢它为什么叫板式风筝全都是整个是平的它后面的骨架是这样这个你看后面呢是这样的从侧面看呢它就是一个平板说这里风筝呢我们叫板式风筝八卦像中间的阴阳鱼也是中国的道教文化你包括八卦图这个放的时候底下又加一个长长的尾巴我们也叫飘带Thank you And this kind of kite is called flag kites 那会有更其他的板式风筝吗? 板式风筝很多 and flat kites are constructed within a single plan and are made of a complete rigid bamboo frame. All the size of the frame or the frame segment are limited by bamboo spars. These kites are very easy to fly. And the kite you have just seen just now is a very traditional type of plate kite in China and it's called Ba Gua. And flat kites are built in many forms and types. When it flies, usually there is a tail attached to the lower part. And plat kite is usually used for the sports of kite fighting. Most fighter kites are small, unstable single line. Flat kites where line tension alone is used for control. It's very easy to make. And the tail is to keep balance.
。嗯，那我看咱们风筝上的图案还有。都各不相同，那他们上面的图案也是有其他的寓意吗？有，你像是咱们你看到这些风筝吧，每只风筝呢图案都不一样。呃，那个你像是这个，呃，沙燕吧，上面是画了很多的梅花，跟喜鹊。这在中国的传统，嗯、呃，寓意上讲叫喜上眉梢，就借用它喜鹊跟这个梅花这两个字的音，是喜上眉梢。对对对，对对。你看下边这一个一只吧，呃，蝶恋花，也就花开富贵。富贵呢，呃，也就是说是非非常嗯、呃、吉祥的用语。你像呃刚才咱们看的是还有这样的，这不是风筝，这这这也是属于是风筝的，像咱们呃上面大老虎，那大老虎，呃龙，这美女都是板式风筝，哎。咱们到这边来看一下。And hanging on the roof of the. And here are some plate. Kite. 它后面呢，嗯，比较软的，我们叫软板的。Okay. And these are all flat kites. You can see here are some. Moon Lady, Dragon, and the Tiger or are all flat kite, or we say plate kite. And according to Mr. Wang, the designs on most Chinese kite have a symbolic meaning or illustration from Chinese folklore or history. Um, Maybe we can see the turtles, cranes, and peaches signify long life. And bats are a design of good luck. Butterflies and flowers represent harmony, and a dragon design represents power and prosperity. Oh, Nicholas, do you get, do you get the meanings of the paintings on the kites? Yeah, I was just uh, asking which is the most important uh, character or creature, and she was saying the dragon's very important, and it's, as you were saying, it symbolizes prosperity. It's good. And the cat and the swallow symbolize long life, yes? Long life. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. And also the turtles are also a symbol of long life. Because turtles, yeah, turtles live a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. And do you, um, what is this? Is this a peacock or a phoenix or? Uh, I will go to ask yeah. our craftsman here. Wang 老师，麻烦问一下，这只风筝，我们外国朋友想问一下，这只风筝是呃那个孔雀还是嗯那个凤凰呢？嗯，凤凰。嗯、呃，这个凤凰、呃、在中国跟龙啊都是搭配在一起，龙凤呈祥嘛。说这个呢，这个、这个这个、这个凤凰啊，呃，它也属于呃立体软翅类风筝，哎。And this soft winged kite is phoenix. Ah,、oh, phoenix.、Okay. Yeah. Yes, I've heard of the phoenix before. <laughs> and phoenix and dragons always come together. Yeah. <laughs> I also like the dinosaur there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the hawk. That this one is also a phoenix. This one is not. This one is two phoenixes flying together. When it flies, it is in the middle. This one we call the phoenix. This one can move in the air. It is in the air, like this. It is in the air, like this. 嗯，就二龙戏珠，哎、嗯，就那中间的珠子。And this part hanging on the roof will, uh, put in the middle of the kite. And it's a fireball, I think. Oh, fireball! Fireball! Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>
and we know that kite making technique in Weifang has been listed among the traditional China's intangible cultural heritage, and Yang Jiabu has cultivated many inheritors of making kites, and Mr. Wang is one of the most representative of the, of the younger generation. Uh, Wow, and Mr. Wang has started to learn to make a kai since he was five to six years old. Um, Nan 1984年呢 with its reputation as a top global production base for kites, Weifang makes um, here has been exported to more than 20 countries and regions. And here in Weifang, it has almost 364 cut enterprises and more than 20,000 people are engaged in the industry. Each year, the cut making business in Weifang realizes sales revenue of. Um, uh, and each year, the cut making business in Weifang realized sales revenue of 1.4 billion yuan. And now, many local families also creating hat make kites in their spare time. And just now, Ms. Wang has talked about the um, Weifang International Kite Festival. And he said that. The festival is now more than just a sports event, but a comprehensive gala for people from home and abroad. Over the past two decades, it has been advancing Weifang's local folk culture, the sports of kite flying, and the kite making industry in a big way. It has been cut that has helped Weifang rise from an unknown city to a livable, flourishing modern city. And uh, we can see that the Fun Zheng
这呢是我们的专利许可证，嗯、呃，因为潍坊啊，这个嗯，风、呃、筝厂家很多，嗯、呃，我们呢也是为了保护自己，注册自己的这个商标，所以我们当时呢也是申请了嗯、呃、一些嗯国际专利。Okay. And here is a license, permission license from the International Kite Federation. And it says that kite making here in Yangjiabu has been confirmed by the IKF, who design propitiation symbol and patentized titles can be used under the authorized circumstances. 哎，那您能再给我们多介绍一些风筝吗？我听说这儿还有，嗯、呃，非常大或者很小的风筝。嗯，可以。呃，我们最大的风筝吧，面积最大，呃，应该是前几年我做了一只大凤凰，有三百八十平方，有篮球场的三分之二大吧。And the largest kite here、uh, covers over three hundred square meters. When it is expanded, and it's about two thirds of a basketball field. 三分之二哈。那最小的风筝在哪儿？您能展示一下吗？嗯，最小的呢是在我们这边展厅一个。你去看一下吧This is the smallest kite in this showroom. And. 呃，你像这个呢是应该是世界上最小的风筝。这个你看有多大呢？也就是有一厘米。你看它的上面呢，包括这个这是一只蝴蝶儿，呃，包括它上面的这个呃蝴蝶须，是我能用头发做的。呃，说这个呢是也是最小的。呃，因为这个这个风筝呢，嗯。它看起来之后啊，呃，比较小吧，呃，实际呢，嗯，做工呢也非常讲究，你包括它的眼睛什么都有。嗯，很精致。对对对。And this is the smallest kite. It covers only about one square centimeter. And for now, it should be the smallest kite in the world. And as we take, and、uh, we can have a closer look. It's really very small. 嗯，您要不再把手指再比一下？我们用让外国观众再看一下，谢谢。And when we compare the finger with it, the butterflies, uh, we can see it's quite small. 然后这个触角也是您的头发是吗？对对对。And um, the butterflies, antennas in the above are very thin. Is probably just about one centimeter long. They are made of Mr. Wang's hair. 嗯，那这个风筝可以飞起来吗？嗯，这个呢，双上线可以飘一下，因为这个风筝太小，嗯、呃，飞得很低很低，嗯、呃，能飞。好的。嗯。Well, um, technically it can fly, but it's very small. Uh, so it makes it even more difficult for us to tie the line and. Catch the wind. 行，那我们现在看了这么多，我刚在这儿逛的时候，发现这儿有一个，嗯，这里边还有后面还有一个屋子哈。嗯，对。呃，我们后边呢，就是说是，呃，便于呃游客呃参观。呃，我们这边呢也是飞机传习所，哎、呃，这个传承人嘛，一般呢就在这里边工作。呃，再说吧，就是。里面呢，就是来了游客之后嘛，可以进去，呃，体验一下，哎、呃，因为这这边嘛，因为我们这边隔了个玻璃墙，将这个风筝的这些生产过程啊、记忆啊，哎、呃，这样呢，人家游客呢能能到我们里面去呢，能嗯体验一下。And in the back of the shop is a relatively large operating room, and this is the work workshop. And also, people can study making kites here. It's a kite making school. Tourists and local residents can personally 
um, come here to operate if they are interested.呃，传习所呢？因为我们这个风筝呢，主要是传手工制作，呃，很多游客来了之后呢，呃，又假如说我们这个拆迁封闭的，他们嗯很难看到我们这个风筝制作技艺，因为这这门技艺啊，呃，
呃，包括锉，呃，包括铲，呃，包括这个剪刀，呃，还有胶水呃，还有这个耙子、锯，呃，这些东西呢，我们都要准备好。准备好了之后呢，我们就挑挑这个竹片。你像这这这些东西啊，这是我们做风筝的原料。哎、呃，这个呢，就说是咱们很常见的竹竹条，就是这个。呃，这个呢，在做的时候吧，先将大料呢。劈开。现在呢，我可以给大家呢演示一下，这个风筝制作呢，首先呢要劈竹子。Okay, um, Mr. Wang has said that these are all tools used to make kite, like the knife, the bamboo strips, tongs, scissors, and the alcohol lamp. And now he's using these methods to make a simple kite. Now he is split the bamboo strip. Can you do this? Oh, <laughs> I think I'll leave it to the export. <laughs> I can try.这个这个我估计情况太太皮啊，你叫他试一下吧，我看看能能能不能皮。这样。Precaution。要用力。啊啊，那这个这个这个有点难哈。对对对。哦，那哎，这边特别这个。用力吧，这样。嗯。你看
you can use the knife to We can see that as a learner, as a green hand, Nicholas is very good at split the bamboo strips. Well done. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> very good job. <laughs> Use fire to roast. Okay. Yeah. Use this tool to make it light so it can be easy to make it. This is a tool to make it fly. Now we are get rid of the pricks and scrap it smooth. The little one away. Making a kite is very calm. Very difficult. Is this the most important step? Yeah. Can we make a butterfly today? Yeah. Can we make a butterfly today? Yeah. Can we make a butterfly And generally, there are four steps, binding, pasting, painting, and flying. And the first step is to make a frame, select high-quality bamboo. And the part of the bamboo is long and straight. So they are produced by row just after splitting, dressing, and connecting process. And before binding a kite, we should draw a design on it. And today we will make a butterfly kite. So first, we should draw the designs on it.
这儿的身体啊，呃，咱们画了一半了，咱们我再画一个我这儿的翅膀，我这翅膀呢在这边。飘带，上面呢画上你想要的图案And now Nicholas has joined us to make a butterfly kite by his own. And for those who have just turn, turned in, we are live from Xinhua News Agency. If you like our live report, please share it with your friend on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And just now, Ms. Wang has said the characteristics of the artistic style and constru construction of kites in Weifang are their carefully selected materials, vivid images, brightly colored paintings, and the agile flying ability. Animals, plants, and figures from uh, folklore and fairy tales are the main subjects painted on the, sky, on the kites or constitute the shapes of the kites. So here we see two beautiful butterflies. Do you have any advice for Nicholas? Wang 老师有什么？嗯，可以。觉得怎么样？嗯，可以。这上上面翅膀呢要大一点，大一点呢，因为这样呢，嗯，看起来也更协调，呃，更协调一些。这样呢，它上柱条吧，这样弯一点，翅膀大了之后呢，它更容易起飞。这个还能改吗？也可以改。嗯。That the upper parts of the wings can be bigger, so it's easier for the kite to keep balance. 嗯，这样这样也可以。呃，这个呢，呃，这个也可以加个尾巴，这儿加一个尾巴。You can also add a tail attached on the lower part. 这儿呢，加一个尾尾巴
，到时候可以剪下来之后，再加一段就行了。哎，行，这随心所欲的话，啊，非常好。哎 ，Good job。And since the Ming and Qing dynasties. Kites gradually began to be combined with different folk arts and crafts in China. One prominent representative are kites made in Yangjiabu, which are a stunning combination of woodblock New Year's pictures and kite painting. And here is an old saying that kites hung on the walls of the New Year's picture are New Year's pictures, and New Year's pictures flung in the sky. Archives. And the kite is particularly about left, right, symmetry, different weight or dissymmetry in piston will affecting its takeoff. It's just like the principle of pulling one here, and the whole body is affected. And making kite is ingenious work, not only involving aesthetics, but also requiring to understand the mechanics principles. And here in the workshop, we can see the workers are busy working here. Some of them are pasting the frame. Can you ask me, what part of the workshop are you doing? The second part is the bird. What bird is this? This is a little bird. And this process is called pasting, and and I will hold it. This is This is the head of the goldfish. Oh, and the frame I have, I'm holding is a dinosaur's head. You can see. That's it. Looks like a dinosaur. And here, some workers are painting here. And we can have a closer look of how they make, make them. These are the tails of the goldfish. You can see they are very professional and the kite has been colored with very bright light colors And after painting, 
They use the glues, glue here. First, they have to draw the lines here and put the shiny decoration on it. And here we can see this is a kite and it's featured in Sun Wukong, which is the monkey king in China. And here are some crowns. I think they are the crowns of the hawk. And over there we have seen the frame of the dinosaur and here those dinosaurs have been well decorated, you can see. Now I can tell it's a dinosaur and it's a good fish. Wow. And there our kite master is Bending on bending the uh, bending the bamboo strips. Let's take a look there. And based on the kite's design, we have to heat the bamboo sticks over the fire to bend them into necessary shapes, which is the tricky step since we have to make sure the bamboo is neither overheated or underheated. While heating, we should move it back and forth like this and not too close to the fire. And we make 
After these procedures, the kites will be left and right symmetry, and it's more easy to take off when flying them. And we also have some kites to DIY, and Nicholas is making her personal customized kite here. Uh, is this an uh, owl? Hmm? What, what kind of animal is it's an owl, I believe. Oh? A very big owl, yeah. Owl, okay. Wow. I think you are more interested in painting them. Yeah, I it's like more painting. easy. <laughs> you like painting? Yeah, I like painting a lot. Okay. Yeah, nice. okay. Enjoy your time. Thank doing. you. So you think painting is the most fun part yeah. in making a kite? Yeah, that's the that's the most fun part for me anyway. I enjoy it a lot. Plus I don't have the skill to make them, so I'll just <laughs> paint them. <laughs> Maybe really making a kite mm, really needs practice. Yes, you have to be very skilled. It, it looks very easy for him, but yeah. it's not that easy for us. <laughs> yeah. <can> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, they're very, um, it's very relaxing to paint. It's good. So, yeah. Can you share with us your experience here today? Oh, it's very good. I had a lot of fun. It's great to see um, such an old tradition being kept alive still. And it's good. I like it a lot. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I can't wait to see how it will flow after you finish it. <laughs> yeah, me too. So you want to decorate them, decorate it in a traditional owl's color, or you want to make it very colorful? I don't know. I seem to be um, painting it in the traditional owl color, but I might paint in pink. I don't know. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> Have you tried to buy a kite before, uh, maybe in Ireland? Yeah, we used to fly kites in Ireland. We what kind of kite? Um, just um, a simple triangle kite. A triangle. Yeah, we wouldn't really have kites that are in the shape of animals in Ireland. They're very simple kites. But we'd have to go to mountains to fly them. So we'd go to the top of the mountain and fly them. So, oh, at the very you have very strong wings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, this is my first time. My first time, yeah. You enjoy it? Yeah, my cousin uh, came here before, and he told us me about that. His name is Rory. So, he has a kite actually in Ireland that I saw before I came here. So I was interested in to see how they're being made, and that's so very good.
呃，您，嗯、呃，就我来杨家埠之后，还听说了很多，嗯、呃，您和风筝很浪漫的故事，然后好像您和您夫人也是缘起于风筝，认识的缘起于风筝，对吗？啊、呃，是，当时呢也是，呃，那个放风筝的时候吧，在外地啊搞这个风筝展览的时候认识的，嗯、呃，当时呢，嗯、呃。也是我在放飞的过程中呢，一只风筝呢掉下来了。掉下来之后呢，嗯、呃，一个一个小孩呢过去捡风筝，嗯、呃，就这样认识的。后来后来这只风筝送给他了。送给他了。对。这就是千里姻缘一线牵。嗯，算是吧。嗯。那风筝也是给你们牵线的重要对象。对对，嗯。嗯，可以说是也是，呃，一个巧合，也是就是通过放风筝嘛，这一根线呢，连在一起了。And here, Miss Wang shared his romantic story with us. We can find by virtue of his two hands, he has broadened his horizon, enriched his experience, and also increased income. And what Kai has brought to him is far more than this. Once Mr. Wang flew a kite at an exhibition in China. After the kite took off, it just flew away. So he went to look for the kite. And after he found it, the line was still attached on the kite. And he felt someone was pulling it back on the other side. So he went there alongside the cut line and found a girl who was there pulling it. And he got to know her at a glimpse. This romantic story is so unbelievable. I think it's what we call a fate match across a thousand miles drawn by a thread. And the romantic story of one's fate formed due to the kite is widely known here in Weifang. This is not just because of rare, rare fate between the two people, but more importantly, Weifang people love the kites. And after making the frame, kite makers must select the proper material for the body of the kite. And the kites made of silk are very durable. And it can be flown in the sky for a long time and never breaks.
down there with the It's very limited here, so we won't show you the whole process of making the kite. And today, during the beautiful springtime, almost every family in Weifang flies a kite to enjoy the pleasant mood of the season. They consider kites, whether made by a master craftsman or a class of young children, they are all works of art and will and kite will always remain near and dear to their hearts. And I'm definitely going to pick a lovely day and fly a beautiful kite before spring disappears. Well, we are going to fly a kite by ourselves. It's a very lovely day. And flying kite is very good for our soul and health, isn't it? So, we are going to fly a kite. Yes, we are going to fly a kite. 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 And for all this, let's wrap up today's live report. If you like our show, please share it with your friends on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can also follow our Xinhua on mobile devices for no more news and updates. See you next time.